Good day, my name is Todd Sang. Thank you for tuning in to my Sasquatch Sunday video. So this is the conclusion of the incredible New York State expedition I went on last week. Uh, you just you have to watch it. To I'll, I'll take you through it because when I was out there in the field, there were things that I missed and uh, little pieces that I need to, to, to make sure you understand about so you can get a whole picture of the entirety of how amazing and mind-blowing. I just can't believe. This is really because of... Uh, because of Kyle, who's in this story, and even Sadie, because of what they did and what they were able to accomplish with my little bit of assistance, it's really changed. And, and the COVID has made it so, Kyle couldn't come out to Canada, so I went to New York State for him, for his expedition. And now I got a trip to Alabama that I'm gonna go on. I'm working on something from Florida. Got guys from Oregon asking me to come out. So this, right, this is really, you always try to look at the bright side. and. Really, this is this might change things where I can I'm gonna go out and really try to have more confidence in my skill sets to go stand on the shoulders of other people that are having great success and go build off of that because as you'll see in this video, just the little things that I did that helped made so much more success happen. And I'm really starting to understand how how I can really be a pebble that causes an avalanche in an area to get tremendous success, you know, a spark that really, you know, ignites a fire. So obviously uh, there's a lot more to go through, but anyways, very exciting. So we're gonna, we'll, I'll take you through this uh, this Sasquatch Sunday with uh, with this New York expedition, this experiment that went so immensely right. Wait till you see. So I'll, we'll go through it. We'll take it step by step, uh, and enjoy. For the past 10 years, I've been conducting expeditions, documenting chronicles, and interviewing people pertaining to the subject of Sasquatch. With over 20 years worth of hardcore backcountry expedition experience into the most remote regions, I've tracked and studied various North American species that have had little to no exposure to civilization. I am a student of many disciplines, trained in the art of tracking by a Cree Nation's elder and a military sniper. My skill sets include camouflage techniques using the terrain and its features to mask ground movement, survival, evasion, and escape techniques. I've been able to see for the first time some complete segments of Todd Standing's filming of Sasquatch, and uh, I'm firmly convinced that he has filmed Sasquatches and that he has, what he has portrayed in his documentary are indeed very close portraits, in fact, of the Sasquatch face. So we need to set this situation up a bit. So we, uh, Sadie, myself, and Kyle, have uh, we picked a, a creek that we were going to follow in just based on the Google map and, and the terrain as it was set up. So we picked this creek to follow in. A creek is an excellent way to <laughs> ensure you don't get lost in new habitat. Uh, I didn't, Kyle had a compass, but uh, we were just uh, going out there kind of, you know, just uh, commando, as, you know, so to speak. But uh, so we, there's a there's a, a spot where, you know, you go, let's say, two, three hundred meters out and there can be little signs. And I, and I believe there was signs of people here and there. But once we got past that, we're a good mile, mile and a half in. And there's really no signs of people. There's no signs of it's just it's just animal. It's wilderness. It's beautiful, beautiful terrain. And then you come across you come across Sasquatch sign that I have I've never talked about this publicly. I've been there's there's so many things that I can't even so many like you'll see with this log the way that so many behaviors that Sasquatch do that nobody even thinks nobody gives a second thought to. And it was that little cue as you'll see in this that takes us to find uh, you know good evidence, but. Uh, yeah, so have a watch through this and understand, again, we are you won't hear any truck sounds, any, it's just no people sounds, because we're, even even the trail, when we were going up and down the main trail, I think we saw maybe five people all week, and they didn't, they went up and down the trail, they went literally up and then down and went back, so uh, there was nobody else spending the night there, the, the place was very, very, you know, there was just no people around, and then consider that we're miles off the trail, and there's there's no trail where we're just following the bush along the the river line and we're really really bushwhacking so uh pretty pretty cool discovery how do you feel about this track so this even though it's still like back weighted like the other one it doesn't have that same playful energy it's like whoever left this had something to do like a place to be an or intent. an intent yeah a definite intention there's no like playfulness or 
time to linger. With Kyle, this one. what just happened here? Why did you? So we're looking at a track. Why did you even look there? Well, because there's a tree break right here, and it's a very big tree. No, no, no that, that, that's. I don't think. I don't it. think that's a tree break, though. No. That's not what you did. That's not what you did. Well, I hopped I think, off I, of it. Trees fall like this all the time. Yeah, I hopped off of it. Mm -hmm. and but why did you hop off there? Because none of the branches are. Or oh, okay. So, so Al is doing it. A very mediocre job of explaining because people, we have to start from right ground zero. So if a Sasquatch walks along here, what I showed Kyle yesterday, if a Sasquatch is walking along here, see these breaks like that? What he'll do is he'll bust this. He'll bust this. And what Kyle did is Kyle comes along here and sees, okay, this is not busted anymore, even past there. So Kyle goes this way and starts looking on the ground. There's likely a track over here. Even maybe not. That could be the first hit. We come over here and Kyle sees this did not look like that. This was like a little bit of an impression here. He says, it's kind of interesting. I go, you got to be a tracker to really get this. So we played around with it and this is how it comes out. So, but it's, it's, we found this because of the clues based on what we know about. They walk along logs like this. They love it, especially the young guys. It's fun. And they'll snap the branches along here and the branches aren't, aren't snapped clearly. Look at that. Not snapped, snapped all the way down. Why? What, look at over there, really snapped. This guy walked along here, and I just imagine this is a, a small Sasquatch, and he's walking along going kick, 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 because he's gonna come back here. He's like, I'm done with this. Boom, over here, hits the ground. There'll be more tracks, but that is the, the smoking gun piece that, you know, we could, we could sit here for hours and find a little other piece of the track, but that one is so significant. And we've all stepped in it, and we all agree. Yes. Something stepped there. Something stepped there. Yeah. So, and that's why we use the little, we use the little cues to find the big cues to, and now this direction is significant. And, and the last, last thing is now if a Sasquatch comes around, he sees our tracks like batshit crazy. They're the best trackers in the world, but he's going to say, look what they did. That, those buggers found my, and maybe even get a little offended, get a little perturbed. Who do they think they are? I'm the tracker around here. I'm going to go put them in their place. And then we get an interaction. That's what we want it. So no matter what, we're, and as I told these two, we're affecting, like we're, the drop that we're, there's waves going out right now. The birds, when you know this ecosystem, this is your home, the birds are acting strange, the chipmunks are doing things, the squirrels are squawking at us. And then the Sasquatch are gonna see that, that indication and come inspect because this is their home. And that's why we're out here. It's not, we don't expect to find a Sasquatch out here, but we, when we leave those, those markings, they'll follow us back and then come see us tonight by the fire where we're comfortable and in the light where they can see us really well. We don't, they don't have high ground around us. That'd be nice if we had a spot where we were low for them to have the high ground. The more advantage you give them, the more likely they'll be comfortable and come around. Like, like where his sighting was, we found high ground. That's a, that's a big deal. All animals live and die based on positioning. Talk, talk, to, a, talk to a military expert. High ground and defensive positioning is, will win or lose a battle. We're, you know, we've, we've known that for back to the days of the Greeks and the Romans. So, and animals still live and die by that stuff. Civilized people don't get it, but they sure do, trust me. Oh, you heard my prediction, and I love this. And I do this, <laughs> I do this all the time. I did it with Survivor Man, I did it with Jeff Meldrum, and I just did it there in New York State. I made a prediction about a Sasquatch gonna come around at night by the fire. Too bad they don't have high ground. Remember I said all that. Now, that night, that same night, Watch what happened. So I met the Empire State staying at a, well, we're not staying, this is my tent back here. That uh, two tents, three people. Um, this is the area we're staying in. Last, yesterday we had some very interesting stuff happen that, uh, so heard multiple sounds in this direction over here that I'm gonna walk right now. This, this park is, uh, this area is old. It's by uh, a lake. <laughs> Maybe I'm not gonna give the exact location because uh, we're getting good success out here and I want Kyle, whose research area this is, who had the, the Sasquatch encounter, I want him to just, just figure out how he wants to move forward with this. So I'll take it step by step, I'm gonna take you through this area. So this is the theory, is there's some scuff marks through here. This is a spot. Sadie was the one that was on the side 
that she could hear all this and I was probably yapping the most, like I usually do. So this is a spot where we are theorizing that there was a, a, a small, young, thin Sasquatch looking here at night, you would never see this. And we're seeing evidence to substantiate that she was low. So at, at dark at night with a fire going, we would never see anything here. So, and Sadie was hearing thumps like that and then also rock knocks. So, like there's that dark impression here. I was following a little earlier. I'm learning. I'm always learning, I'm always a student. So, trying to think how a female would come around because it's, a, sl it's, a, it's a, th a slender young track. So now I have to th think about how a female would move around. So, and even, this is, a, this, is, this is New York Sasquatch. So now we have to, the terrain is different because I see this is something we don't see in Canada. Like that's, that's decades old, right? And we see like bottles from the 70s around here a little bit. It's, it is a clean, nice place. It is beautiful. You can't, you know, 1% of people are going to make a mess and be disrespectful to it. Nothing you can do about that. But this is our, we, we, have, we have good evidence here. This is where I can get a size of the track and low motion. Because again, this is what the Sasquatch is going to see, right? She pops her head up and there we are. She goes down, we can't see her anymore. So what was probably the best evidence we have right now, something I do have experience with, but, but, I, but I've never seen it done subtly like a female would do, is, so Kyle saw this damaged. So what he did was, seeing it damaged, he pulled it away and he saw that the, the rock was knocked on. So we took a rock, I did this, just to practice. And I did some knocks here. It looked like there was about six knocks. That's about what Sadie heard was six knocks. So what's, what's different for me though, is when it happened with Survivor Man and me on other occasions, the Sasquatch will actually leave a footprint here, make a big boom, leave a footprint, knock, and leave the rock and go, ha ha, come find me. And I'll come find the rock with a knock. That's what happened on Survivor Man. We didn't find the rock, and we didn't even see the, the bangings, because they were hidden. It wasn't until this was moved, and this is fresh. Kyle uh, told me he believes this is fresh. I disagree with him. This is definitively fresh. This isn't even a day old. Yesterday, because I'm out here, I get it. And yesterday it was very hot, and we had no moisture. This will dry up and look like hell tomorrow. So this is extremely fresh. I don't think this has been through a day since it's been ripped and removed. It'll show signs of brownness, brownness, and this is nothing. I did this over here just to test. But, and even, even the precision of what's going on, because the rock knock here, that's what it sounds like on the moss. That's what it sounds like on the rock. So, and then you'd ask the question, why didn't she just knock here? Well, she would leave marks. If you were just so incredibly intelligent and so immensely interested in being brilliantly stealthful, I would remove the moss, knock there, and cover it back up. Ha <laughs> ha! Like, that's... No animal is ever going to do that. I, that's why I say I learn from Sasquatch because they're so darn intelligent. This is, this is a level of blow your mind, holy crap. This is a highly trained, highly experienced, even the exit point. Snipers will teach you what I study, survival, evasion, and escape techniques. Escape point, low to the ground. Man, if I lay flat here, if I make a rock sound, and somebody comes over here, I'm down and I'm out. Like this is exodus, have a good day, you're never gonna see me. Brilliant, brilliant strategy. And now once, once she does the rock knock and Sadie responds but doesn't get crazy, Sadie and, and the rest of us say, we're not going anywhere and we show our metal, she's gonna get a little closer, get a little confident, make a thump sound over there, again with an incredible exit point, and then and the high ground. be done for the day. Oh, and this is high ground, this is higher ground than us. So. And as you see on Survivor Man, as you see in my movie, the Sasquatch come around one day and test you. When you pass, you're going to get day two, day three, day four. So we are going to be here one more night. And my prediction, remember how I predicted for Jeff Meldrum, predicted Les Stroud? My prediction is we will get significantly more interactions tonight. Even if this is a subtle female. Right now, this was very exciting. She's around thinking about us. She might be watching me right now probably is but the point is this is very exciting for her because we're a bunch of human beings that are normally re 
ridiculously ignorant civilized beings but these one are some fun and if we are finding this stuff and she sees that we found this she's gonna go holy crap those are the those are the smartest dummies i've ever seen in my whole life holy crap they found my tracks they found the rock knock she's gonna tell all, and this is gonna be exciting to all the new york sasquatch there's some civilized dummies over there that really figured some shit out these guys are fun let's take it to another level and so that's why i get success that's why I'm getting things that other people aren't getting is because, cause, because I found Kyle. Kiss my ass. It's my bitch now. <laughs> so I found Sadie. It's even, it's even when, you're, when you're at a level where you have a documentary on Netflix and people are watching it, now you want to get strong, listen and talk and find people to help you. Because if I do this alone, I, I'm in deep. It's, it's not going to happen. I did this alone for so many years. I was, one thing I knew is I was going to die. So... I almost, these, these expeditioners are always asking me now, what's it like to be alone? With I really don't do hardly alone ever. I don't need to. And it's not to my advantage. If I didn't have these two makahais today, <laughs> they wave. Kyle found that. I didn't find that. You know, Sadie was hearing all this stuff and Sadie is feeling things that I'm not feeling. So I'm taking all the success and I'm taking all, well, I'm not, I'm telling them that they're here, but I get the success because I cooperate. Do you get it yet? Do you get the power of cooperation? It's, it's, it's as important to find people to work. Ford would be nothing. Do you think Ford was an engineer? Do you think Ford, he would be nothing without all the people that built up his company. And it's, it's great men and women that have had success like that that make me understand I need to, I, I'm a cooperative individual and I'm going to have power because of that. I can have discovering research centers all over North America because I keep finding people like Kyle. So, and Kyle's taking shit from me and I'm treating him like crap and he's just going to take it because he thinks I'm some awesome, amazing guy with the stupid crap that I've done. But, uh, and he's 21, so he's in this for the long run. Two. So, 22? Yeah. Punk. So he's going to be around <laughs> for a long time. So, and when I'm old and I can't move anymore, I'll have people like Kyle doing my stuff for me, right? So, and taking a lot of credit for it because I deserve it because I found him. He's my discovery. <laughs> So, but I'm also, as I'm standing on his shoulders, he's standing on mine and you get that ladder effect that's happening. So, um, yeah, really cool stuff. New York stuff, very different terrain. Uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling 50-50. I have ferns in British Columbia. I don't know about these plants, but you know, I see the squirrels, I see the chipmunks, I see the deer, there's deer tracks all over the place here, no elk. So there's, there's, a, there's more similarities and differences, I guess. But, so we're gonna do what we do today. Even, you know, you know you guys leaving for a while? If we leave and the Sasquatch see us leave, they'll come right in here. Right. So, see us investigating them. yeah, but when we're gone, now they can come right, or they can go smell our food, yeah. right? So before on expeditions, I would leave and come back in the middle of the week and that was highly advantageous because even even if they're leaving, do the Sasquatch really know if we're coming back? Oh, they're gone. Oh no, oh no, they're gone. Yay, they're back, let's get crazy. Does that make sense? So uh, lots of advantages to leaving and coming back and doing that and giving them their space. So take it step by step. This is, this is uh, we had a smoking gun track yesterday with a tree break showing that they've been here in the last They've been here this season, probably in the last weeks, I would think. And if this stuff is accurate, I'm really relying on, you know, did Kyle bullshit me? Did Kyle put some rock taps on there? Kyle couldn't have done that. Kyle couldn't have made the rock taps. Uh, he could, actually, there's no way Kyle could have faked that. I wasn't here when Kyle made that discovery. But how did Kyle, if he, Kyle ripped the moss, and how did he make some clack nouns? Did you hear any clacking, Sadie? No. So Kyle's telling... So Kyle's telling the truth. Those were those were tap sounds. Sadie heard tap sounds. We found tap sounds. I, it's it's hard for me to to have this 22 year old punk find a piece of information. Actually, it's not hard. It kind of takes the pressure off me because it's cooperative, right? But he can't be bullshitting with that. Uh, the track matches. This track is authentic that Kyle found because it matches the tracks that I was finding over there that he didn't do. And then Sadie heard sounds in different directions. And Sadie was like, yeah, here and here. And then you come into the wilderness and you find signs of Sasquatch here and here where she heard the sounds. So uh, again, she was in the position. She was listening. So everything's, when, when people tell the truth, the evidence supports that. When they're bullshitting, you see it and it, it doesn't last. And all I'm seeing here, everything, starting with Kyle's 
and Kyle's dad's incident five years ago. You know what we found? I didn't talk about this. We found tree breaks over 10 years old, five years old, two years old, and this year old. That means the Sasquatch have been here for 10 years they've been coming here. Now, when you, have, when you have a wilderness expert that's been coming out here, and you know what, that'd be foolish. I have evidence of 10 years. If they've been here for 10 years, you'd be a dumbass to think they haven't been here for 20,000 years. 20,000 years, this has been their home, their land, they haven't left, they have that kind of back history. So, you're dealing with wilderness experts at an elite level you can't even imagine. So, we're just gonna keep working with them, working within the parameters that they set forth. We're gonna keep learning from these teachers and, and this could be, yeah, and with Kyle and Sadie out here, this could be a really big deal. So I'm very excited about this. New York State, the Empire State, Bigfoot. I have to call them Bigfoot. You call them Bigfoot out here, you guys? Bigfoot. It's yeah. all Bigfoot? Ugh, not we gotta, Bigfoot. We got to transition into Sasquatch. No, I don't know. We'll, we're going to think about that because I like to, my problem is indigenous people deserve their credit. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's it. Have a good day. And if, People in the United States call them Bigfoot. That's the term they used. Like it or not, that's the term. It's indigenous. You're the people. So if we, if we could find the natives who originally lived here that are gone and find their name, then that would be amazing. But right now, the indigenous people are you guys. This is your home. I would love to research that and see if I can find anything out about that. Fantastic. Awesome. So they're talking about researching it. That'd be fantastic. I'd love having that respect. So we'll catch up later, see what else happens. Very important that I point out that my prediction was wrong because it rained. And even I would have told you that if it was going to rain, the weather was going to go to heck. The Sasquatch just don't come around. So out of uh, over a hundred nights I've spent in Sasquatch habitat doing all the right things. But when it rains, in those hundred nights that it rains, even though I did all the right things, they've only come around once in the rain ever. And that was a, an exceptional circumstance. So... Uh, so they're, they're, you know, I do the best I can to make predictions, but uh, when you're outside, weather will, will, will hammer you and change everything. Um, what I'd like to mention here, too, is uh, I come off making it like Sadie heard all the sounds. That's actually not true. Sadie heard them profoundly, and Sadie was able to pinpoint the sounds because she was specifically had her ear over there. She was the closest to the edge. But I heard them, too. I heard the rock knocks. I heard the thumping. And, and I heard them in the general direction, but Sadie was there pinpointing them. And I'll tell you, it was it was absolutely so exciting to see the look on Kyle's face and look on Sadie's face as there was definitively a Sasquatch out there, and and they knew it. So those sounds like rock knocking and, and the thudding, so they knew 100% it was Sasquatch. I hate to say it, but you can see they were feeling the fear, but uh, they held their ground. They did they did very well. I was I'd give them, you know, 10 out of 10. I was impressed with both those individuals. It's it's. You'd, you'd think it was a miracle that I was able to come upon those people, but uh, it was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of time. It was a lot of interviews. It was a lot of a lot of emails to go through. So that's that's a lot about what being a, a full time Sasquatch researcher is about. Is about finding the right people that you need. And uh, I mean, Sadie wearing that nice green dress. Hike. She was hiking through the nastiest bush. Like she was going. She was bushwhacking with us. And she was wearing that ensemble that people are complaining about, and I don't care. She was out there. Were you out there barefoot, grinding? She, not only did she not complain, she loved it. She was in her element. It was very clear that she has tremendous experience there, and uh, Kyle loved it. And so, and and we have a lot of people are going to say too. And this is this is something that would stand out to me skeptically. Well, how can you? How can I make those predictions? Well, I can make those predictions because I've spent over a thousand days in the backcountry doing research and it's it's happened so much and and a bear in a black bear in you know washington state is going to do the same thing is going to have very similar behaviors very similar mannerisms to black bears in new york state all the way up into canada so i'm i'm, I'm making these uh predictions based on known behaviors that i've experienced I am at a level at Sasquatch Research where I can really make these predictions and I listen to what I'm saying, guys. This stuff, it's its legit, it's real. I, that's how I impress Survivor Man and Jeff Meldrum and John Bernagel and, and these expeditioners. And <clears throat> and these aren't, these are, this is, I, I know there's so much garbage out there, I know so much faking and hoaxing, but Kyle and Sadie are real people. I just met them to go to New York. It was the first time I ever met these people. They're absolutely, Sadie is profoundly Sadie on Instagram. Kyle, you'll find him. He's a friend of mine on Instagram, and uh, he's got some of the photographs of us posted. Uh, 
don't know if they're on Facebook or not, but real, legit, uh, awesome Americans that I was just so proud to work with. So one more little segment here, and then I'll, I'll close it up with a, a, a final little uh, assessment of, of, of how I feel about things are going right now. So watch this last little segment. Probably can't see that right now, but... What about this? I'm just, I'm talking on the camera, but if you look here, see, see how there's a toe across and a t right here, look. So the toe there and a toe goes all the way over to here. And if you watch, when I look at, look at the heel, it was obviously a lot long, like, look at that. <laughs> okay. We're going to call that a Sadie track. So, and it's really fresh. Sadie doesn't have another one. Sadie's got to stop tracking because it's okay. supposed to be my job. I don't track. She's don't. trying to steal my show. I don't know what I'm doing. But it's, it's, it's deep. But there's something here. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm doing. And there's something here. It's a lot more spongy than the other around Ooh. it. And it's bigger than her foot. Not much bigger, though. Because we're not, not talking much. about it. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that, Sadie. Go to now slide your foot to the top. See? And then it goes to. See? It's, it's like wider and longer and bigger. Big toe. Big, big toes. Little toe. Heel. You might be asking, what is she doing in bare feet? What are you doing in bare feet? So, in bare feet, I can actually feel the ground better. Mm -hmm. I have more awareness of mm -hmm. what's happening underneath me, and there's energy. The ground gives off energy, mm -hmm. um, almost like a hot and cold. Some people would say like a tingling sensation. So with shoes, it mutes it, like lightning, right? Rubber, rubberized, and mm -hmm. you're not affected by that electricity charge. Mm -hmm. In bare feet, there's no barrier. I can feel it better, so I can find things. Mm. That's not true. She's been doing this since she was like this big. She was like thrown out in the swamp and go find it. She cooks rats and possums and wombats and not wombats. She's from the United States. She's a swamp girl. She knows how to take cattails and eat them for a week and make shelters out of it. So she's one of these weird little, she grew up like that. She doesn't like to put shoes on. She picked me up at the airport barefoot. Who walks around the airport with no shoes on? Jumping up and down, oh my God, it's Todd standing. That's how she picks me up at the airport. Then she comes up here and she's 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 showing me how tuber plants are, and she's just impressive skill set. So it's it's almost kind of annoying because she's I can't do my job anymore. And she's actually this, finding more tracks than you. And this punk over here. So well, they always come to me and go, Todd, do you think it's a track? And I go, No, it's not a track. And then I go, Oh yeah, no, you, <laughs> you didn't find a track. That's my job. So I'm trying to be. Anyways, and she wanted to come this way, so this is uh, the Empire State, New York State. There's uh, crows are getting real weird. We're going that way. Would you like to lead, please? Your inspiration's you go good. This way or right up that way? Which way do you want to go? I'd like to go straight mm -hmm. where I'm facing. Mm -hmm. so there's almost like a natural path. Okay. Let's go. As you can see, the way I'm leading this expedition is by letting them run with their inspiration. Sadie wants to go a particular direction. I want to go a particular way, but we go with the way Sadie feels. And guess what? We found more tracks over there. So she was on the right path. Um, for those of you that are that are bothered by this whole, this, this spiritual angle that really Sadie is immensely about, you don't really understand. You're not... I'm not going to pick any bones about it. There's a damn good reason I'm doing this stuff. You know the native people who were the best trackers that ever lived. No, Does anybody argue that? The natives were the greatest trackers. This goes back, you can look into the old documents of old colonels and generals that w worked for the United States government. They couldn't find Geronimo. You understand that, right? The best white trackers in the world couldn't even come close. To, it took a native to find him. Those natives track the way that I track and the way Sadie's doing things, that spiritual, if you're, if I'm sorry if you're not into that stuff, but it's, these are facts now. This is not, this is not debatable. People have empathic abilities. These are facts. And if you're not on board, they teach this in psychology in universities now. Third Eye Spies is, 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 is physicists from, from major universities that have done actual factual proven that this stuff is real. So it's, and it's not just a spiritual connection, it's the psychic, it's the empathic ability, it's feeling your way around. I've been doing this stuff for years, so uh, I need this. And you know what? The Sasquatch do this stuff, and I have profound evidence 
that substantiates that, that I will start to reveal in my next uh, movies and whatnot. So, I mean, tell me, you, and you know what, again, I prove it to anybody. Anybody who, just give me five minutes and I'll prove you have psychic ability. So, and that connection, that love force, that, that energy to follow, that's how the best trackers in the world worked. People couldn't understand. How do you track somebody who walked over rocks? You feel their energy. I'm, I'm not keeping this stuff secret anymore. This is, this is, these are facts. This is how I've been on an expedition. I can't tell you how many times I've told people there's a mountain lion stalking us and boom, there he shows up. How did I know that an hour ago? I didn't see anything. I didn't smell anything. I couldn't, you know, like I don't have that special sensory perceptions like deer and elk and, and wild animals do, but I have, I have the ability to feel energy and it's very legit. It's very real. It's very much part of this discovery. And don't take my word for it. Look at the ridiculous success I'm generating because I've gone down this road and I, and I use people. Well, I use Kyle to get me out there and people like him to, to do this with me, but I use, I like those empaths. And I'll tell you, Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, they were into this stuff. They did it. They just didn't talk about it. And the top primatologists in the world are doing it right now. If you want to have outstanding success, if you want to really get to the next level, science sure didn't do it. You know, I love John Bernardagle. He's, he's, I feel like he's a, I feel like an adopted son of his. He went hardcore with the science and he never got the discovery done. And he had a long way to go. So science is very skeptical. Science is extremely conservative. And conservative isn't going to get this discovery done. You must understand that. So thank you very much for tuning in. I don't, I don't even, I'm so excited about going back to the U.S. I got multiple things going back there. I may start doing, after the success of this new, you understand, we had a Sasquatch come around us. We were out there for five days. And it rained on the last day tremendously. I don't know what, what kind of incredible success we would have generated. I mean, it was pouring rain. So we had absolutely no success on that last night. And, uh, you know, weather screws it up. But to think, I have to say, I, I'm 100%. I mean, tracks are an indicator of a living being. We heard sounds and then we found tracks. And uh, there's, there's, there was a lot more going on behind the camera where you could see that she was dragging her feet and there was a placement of a, a hand placement where she had to crawl up where she was staying low to the ground there was that ridge there that was high ground remember I said they need high ground and there wasn't a definitive high ground but when you're born and raised there and you've known that place your whole life she knew exactly where to come in and have that ridge line and and get up on us and 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 have a safe exit point so just tremendous tremendous evidence there are Sasquatch in the Adirondacks there are Sasquatch in New York State. I've been there and the evidence is there. As sure as as sure as a biologist, you and you must for anybody who's skeptical, you must understand a biologist goes into any research area and he sees tracks from a mountain lion and he checks it off. There are mountain lions there. He sees tra tracks from a bear, he checks it off, there are bear there. It's a fact. Tracks are an indicator of a living species. There's no two ways about it. In my professional opinion, after decades of tracking experience and working with the best elite trackers in the world, I am 100.0% convinced there are definitively Sasquatch in the Adirondacks. I was involved in a Sasquatch, I would call that uh, a Sasquatch Interactions. We live interacted with the Sasquatch in only five days. That is absolutely bloody hell amazing and fantastic. I am going to just think about this and think about where it's going to lead me in the future because I, if I could travel around the United States when it's winter in Canada and go to the hot spots in the U.S., it's a, such a big game changer and I had so much fun and met so many cool people. This is, uh, and, and, the, and the fallout, Blue Line Bigfoot I did a show and I've got dozens of emails from all these incredible New York people that have all this cool stuff going on down there. So... Just, this is fantastic. This discovery is very exciting. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, I'll be back with more stuff next week. Uh, there'll be a big update on my Wednesday live show, that's for sure, because, like I said, I'm planning to go somewhere, and things are coming really fast. So stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be a good year. I'm excited. Looking forward to it.